Mark Todd uh, from Fig Securities joining us. Mark, uh, well, really smart money would be on what? A bit of a push out now, it would seem, beyond August into September, although still flashing those warning signs from from uh, from Europe. Really interesting to see six nations with negative yields now uh, for bonds maturing two years or less. Not just Germany, but uh, Finland, Austria, Netherlands, Denmark and Switzerland. All the well-behaving countries, Carson, and good morning. Um, I think they get the reward for um, being fiscally uh, aggressive and for you know maintaining the budgets that people want to see in terms of the sovereign. Uh, in terms of our interest rates, I think there's a uh, there's a reasonable argument to say that the RBA will wait and will wait for as long as humanly possible. Yeah. The RBA is of the view, in my mind, that the Australian economy is in a good enough state and if it was under some stress, the RBA would point to jobs in the West and in Queensland and say, seek that job, make that move. And I think they want more mobility in the economy to support where the various jobs are. And so they might just keep the rates a little bit harder to, to sustain that pressure on how they want to see the the economy uh, evolve and it, it, it makes some sense in terms of a, uh, a macroeconomic policy. Speaking of macroeconomic policy like the IMF are they gonna to have to start adjusting their calls on you know the rest of the world's growth profile because it seems as if Europe's as gonna be a write-off right. for 2013. Yeah as in get it right you like yeah. them to get it right. Yeah. Uh, Carson you're asking an awful lot there. Um, that in reality, I think that they would suggest, if they came out and suggested that the economy for Europe is more like the economy of Japan in the 80s and 90s, it would suggest that, that, that there is a, a multifaceted problem within Europe and it'll take years to come about to get it resolved. Everyone's got their own intrinsic problems and their, their own uh, federal structures. So does Spain regional government report into the federal government and, and therefore can they get a cohesive policy? It really will be just the uh, duration of time and so in terms of GDP growth I think it's safe to say that it'll be uh, anemic at best for the next few years. Well, a big worry when you saw that, G that ZEW survey coming out because if Germany was meant to be a bit of a firewall uh, it's looking as if it's fallible. Uh, and I think what it'll do, Carson, and, and to some extent, yeah. there would be an argument around that would say they want Germany to be more fallible because they'll be more uh, amenable to changes in terms of what, what austerity and austerity only policies are. So they might be more stimulatory and they might be more cohesive. What we're all looking for in, in uh, Europe is a unified voice. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, we don't have that. And the reason is because of German benefits around a low uh, euro, exporting the life out of it, having you know reasonably mm -hmm. strong performance. And so if it starts to say that we are in this together and it, and it starts to get the people on board, and that's the, the problem for Merkel, getting the people on board, if it starts to see those people come on board, then you might see a change in the way they approach the problem. All right, let's talk about uh, the Fed's approach to the problem of, if anything, a deteriorating jobs uh, climate there. How bad do things have to deteriorate before they will intervene? Um, I think it's interesting, that the, in respect of the intervention, I think you need to uh, identify what that actually means. Mm. For the Fed, the intervention is to keep that mortgage rate low, and I think they'll be active in that, and they'll be active in that on a regular basis, because the Fed's view is that the economy is the, the, the housing market is the driver in the economy that they want to stimulate. That's where the problem started, that's and that's the one they need to resolve. Mm -hmm. So as a consequence, when you hear equity people mm. saying, we need QE3 because we want the equity market to rally, mm. the Fed is conscious of it but it's not really the, the main game for them the main game for them is employment and via the housing market mm -hmm. that stabilization and that's where they'll continue to intervene in a, in a managed as soon as that curve starts to shift up they'll, they'll try to move it again well the, the thing is if you get a lead indicator you might say being the health of the retail sector which all links back to the consumer who's carrying a mortgage or who isn't you know we're in that trough from 08 now that's the parallel uh, when we were on the skids towards recession so surely that's a trigger point well I, the, but then again they would say that the the American consumer was a badly behaved consumer and so therefore all it is is repairing its own balance sheet mm. it comes down to as how have housing prices stabilized clearly they have is there activity in the housing market we're starting to see that happen on a regular basis it's not going to run away what they need is a sustained growth but in truth the point is that the 
US corporate has been able to sustain a jobless recovery and that has an effect on both the consumer and the worker, one and the same people. And so if you're unsure that you'll lose your job because of European headwinds, you think the employer is happy to let go of staff, you're unlikely to be a retail buyer. But what you will try and do is get a loan mortgage and pay as much of that mortgage off as possible. So that's the sort of balance sheet repair that we're seeing and what we want, what um, the Fed wants mm -hmm. is to have some more confidence in the employee that he'll keep his job and therefore you know, put on right. a, a bit of building. Okay, bond uh, yields uh, near record lows off the back of all of that, particularly in the US. Uh, some have said more of a commitment now by the Feds required to drive rates significantly lower. Do you agree? No, I, I think the, the <laughs> I think the people the the fact that it's a dead cat bounce, or if it's not a dead cat, it's a very sick cat bounce. Um, the reality is that everyone is looking for sovereigns any in any liquid state, and they'll be looking to go in the institutional market. They'll be looking to buy that, and if there's any sell-off in any good corporates, um, the the investor base, the retail investor base, will be looking to buy that. So the bond market will continue to rally over time, and they will look for sell-offs to try and get more bonds on. Thanks for that call, Mark. Always appreciate it. You have a good day. You too, Carson. Mike Todd from Fig.